Holmes used to sweat when I had to get on the highway. Now with my Camry V6, I just punch. Yeah, punch it, Margaret. My Toyota, I love it. The 1989 Toyota Camry V6. 24 valves, 153 horsepower to please even the toughest customers. We just fell in love with life in the fast lane. My Toyota, who could ask for anything more? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh, and I know you guys are probably sick of seeing that commercial, but I couldn't help but start off this video with Margaret and her 1989 Toyota Camry V6, because here we are, 35 years later, Margaret had the first one, we have the last one, and today we are talking all about this final year, 2024, Camry XSE V6. We are coming up on six months of ownership with this car, so as always here on the channel, we are going to be doing a six likes and six dislikes video. And a lot of you have been asking for this one because I know a lot of you are on the fence about whether you should go out and buy one of these final year V6 Camrys before they go away. And by the way, the rumor mill has it that because the 2025 model is really just a heavy refresh, Toyota is actually gonna be switching over production to that 25 model year a lot sooner than they normally do for a new model year. And so we really are probably in the final months to get one of these Camrys Camry V6 is new if you want one. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into the video. As always, all of my likes and all of my dislikes, which you see here on screen, will also be chapters down in the play bar below. So you can jump and skip around the video as you wish. And so let's go ahead and jump right into my very first like, which is the sculptural design and the exterior styling of this eighth generation Camry. And ever since this generation came out, I have to tell you guys, I have been such a huge fan of it. I remember, in fact, when this generation came out in either 2016 or 2017, and we started seeing them on the road, and I just thought... This was one of the most handsome sedans that Toyota has ever made. Because with this generation of Camry, what Toyota did was they dropped the belt line, they made the hood a little bit longer, they tidied up the rear deck, and now with this generation of Camry, I just think the proportions are perfect. And that's kind of in opposition to what Honda's been doing with the Accord and the Civic where they've tried to stretch those sedans out into coupe-like things. And I think it actually kind of works on the Civic, but I don't care for the styling on the new Accord. It just looks like a giant wedge and it's a little bit too long, I think, to pull off that coupe-like profile. The other thing I really love with the exterior design of this car that just every time I see the front clip of this car, I have to stop and just kind of admire it for a second because I actually think that this is probably also the most handsome face that Toyota has ever put on any of their sedans. And the thing I love about the Camry's face, even as opposed to some Lexus's, is that they've managed to create a nice, big, sporty, opening-looking grille. It kind of evokes the Lexus spindle grille. But I think the execution again, especially here on this XSE, is done so well that you don't have the big gaping maw of the uh, Lexus spindle grill, nor do you have the super kind of like new age look of the new Prius and the new Crown. All the contours and all the body lines that run down the side of the car, run down the hood, and kind of come in from the sides, they all come together in a perfect point where that Toyota emblem is situated. And then the emblem itself, of course, is seated perfectly in its own little cradle. I just think that this car looks so perfect and it's perfect to a point where when I look at the new 2025 Toyota Camry I just don't care for the face because I think as a side effect of the 2025 Camry being really a facelift of this generation of Camry they tried to graft on a Prius looking face onto the new Camry without that much success I think that it's kind of forced to work on that car which was really designed for this front clip and a quick fun fact about the exterior of this car this remains, to this day, even though this car is now about six or seven years old, it remains as one of the only Toyota cars in the entire lineup that has full LED lighting on the outside from the factory. Even a lot of the new Toyota cars don't have that and can't make that claim, but this Camry absolutely can when you have a trim that comes with the upgraded lighting. All right, moving on now to my second like, and that, of course, has got to be the absolutely amazing 2GR V6 engine that is still under the hood of this Camry V6. And this engine is, and probably always will be, one of my favorite engines that Toyota has ever or will ever make. And one of the reasons I love it so much is that not only does it make all the cars that it was put in such a joy to drive, but it was also available 
to the general public at a really reasonable price point. If you think back to the 2000s and the 2010s, it was really this engine that made all of Toyota's cars so great. So you think about something like a Camry V6, like a Highlander V6, like the original Venza, and of course everything on the Lexus side from the IS to the RX on the ES, it was really this engine that created the amazing experience that you would have when you were driving any of those cars. And you can have this V6 engine for as little as $34,000 in the Camry TRD. I mean, in today's world where everything is a turbocharged or a hybrid or a supercharged four-cylinder, that is an absolute steal. And more importantly than that, this Camry is truly one of the last sedans that you can get at all with a V6 engine. And when we look at the other offerings in the midsize sedan class, that still offer a V6. The next one up in price is the Lexus ES350. And after that, it goes way, way up from there. And hear me loud and clear, I am not comparing this Camry to like a 5 Series or an E-Class, but with the whole world moving to turbo fours and hybrid fours and all that kind of thing, this Camry is truly one of the last great driving sedans that is left on the market at any price point. And that alone, I think, makes it really special and worth buying here in 2024. And on that note, speaking of this being a great driving sedan, this engine makes 301 horsepower and can do the 0 to 60 run in 5.8 seconds. So there's some real performance here. And when this generation ends and the all hybrid 2025 comes out, we are going to lose 76 horsepower and two seconds in zero to 60 time. That is a big difference. And if all of that isn't enough to convince you to give this V6 a shot, here's something else to consider. Because this engine runs on the Atkinson cycle, meaning that it's going to be incredibly efficient in day to day driving, we have actually been able to get up to 34 miles to the gallon on highway trips when we've road tripped this Camry, which is actually higher than what we were able to do in my NX hybrid, which has a much smaller two and a half liter four cylinder engine and in general is a much smaller car. You'll get the incredible power and incredible response when you need it, but you'll also get the efficiency that you might be looking for in this day and age of incredibly high fuel prices. All right, guys, moving on now to my third like, and that is building on the V6 story, the way that this car drives with this 2GR V6 engine. And I'm gonna have to warn you in advance. I know this is a like chapter in this video, but still, this section is gonna be a whole lot of gushing over this engine because it is just absolutely magnificent. And it is really why, like every time I drive this car and I drive this engine, it just reminds me how Toyota cars used to drive and how amazing this engine is. As we're leaving my neighborhood now here under light throttle, under just, you know, part acceleration, so quiet, so refined. I've been on the accelerator the whole time because we're going uphill and I don't hear anything, so I'm pretty sure the mic's not picking anything up here either. Um, because that's just how quiet this engine is. In one word, if I had to describe it, it would be effortless. Okay, so we are at the tollway on-ramp that I always take in all my videos. We don't have anyone behind us and there's no one in front of us, which is perfect. So as soon as we get around this bend, I'm gonna open it up full throttle and here we go. driving this car so so much I've actually got to pull it back because we almost hit we almost had a speed that's very illegal but oh man this engine it's such a like I said before it's just such an incredible little machine because while yeah. it can be very refined in the city and in day-to-day -day driving when you're at part throttle and you're just poking along when you want power and speed out on the highway this thing delivers and it delivers like crazy I mean, not only does it pull really strongly, but it also just delivers the best noise that you could ever ask for, too. And then, you know, out here on the highway, too, this Camry is noticeably quieter than the RX350 that we were driving not too long ago, which is pretty impressive given that, again, that was supposed to be a luxury car. This is not supposed to be a luxury car, and yet we have such refined driving dynamics. And in the RX as well, I was hearing a lot of other vehicles around me on the road, and I'm not hearing that in this Camry, which is also weird because these are not uh, laminated windows. It's a single pane of glass. And still, I feel like it's a lot quieter in here than it was in that RX. Now, 
we're getting to a point in the road here where I can, I'm kind of falling below the speed limit again. The speed limit here is 75. I'm doing about 70. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is I'm waiting for us to get past this junction because I want to open it up full throttle again from speed this time and let you hear and see the way that this car pulls because it's just, I love driving this engine because of all the power that it can deliver when you want it. And so as soon as we get around the curve, I'll open it up again full throttle. Okay, here we go. No one in front of us, no one around us. So let's go ahead and open this guy up full throttle. And you know, when you're doing this, it can actually be kind of scary. Like, okay, I'm actually gonna have to slow it down there because you get to triple digits in no time. And I don't know if you can see the speedometer from that camera back there. I kind of hope you can because I don't need proof of what we were just doing here, but man alive, this car delivers a punch of power when you want it. You can just have a ton of fun in here. Should we open it up one more time? I think we should. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, oh, oh. You can have, it's scary fun in this car when you want it to be. And it's crazy again, because this is a Toyota Camry of all cars out there on the planet. So, yeah. Okay, but let's go ahead and get off the expressway and we'll head back into the backwoods and get on some nicer, slower roads and where we can really enjoy the quietness and the refinement of this V6 engine. The other side of its split personality, if you will. Ugh, there's a TX over there. Thing is so ugly. The more I see of the TX, the more I don't like it. Yuck. All right, guys, here we are in the backwoods of town along the green belt, and I love driving this road, and I especially love driving this road in this Camry. You know, as much as I love my V8 in the GX, and as much as I love Toyota and Lexus's V8s in general, I actually think that if you held a gun to my head and said I had to choose one or the other, whether a V6 car like this or a V8 like what's in my GX, I would honestly probably take this uh, V6 because the one you are V8 in the GX can never deliver that sharpness that this V6 can, those super sharp, super crisp shifts, that effortless like throws you back in your seat kind of pull. It's not meant to be a sporting engine. I am gonna miss this engine so, so much when it goes away because this experience that we're having right now and the whole experience that we've had on this whole drive, we are never ever going to be able to replicate that with any other Toyota engine out there. Yes, electric engine or electric motors do pull really strongly, but they don't make that sound <laughs> that this V6 does. And so I know that's the future. And I know, you know, 50 years from now, we'll all be driving electric cars and that's fine. But I really do hope in all honesty, that in 50 years, we still have this Camry and my GX. They'll probably have a million and two miles on them, but you know, the other thing about this 2GR V6 is we know that this engine will last that long too. So yet another feather in this Camry's hat. Again, going back to what I said at the beginning of the video, effortless. In one word, effortless. All right, guys, here we are back in the driveway for my fourth like about the Camry, which is the interior quality and fit and finish and final assembly of all the materials around this cabin. And it's kind of crazy because we've been driving a lot of new Toyota and Lexus products as of late, like the RX 350 that we were driving here on the channel not too long ago. And I have to tell you, in all honesty, the materials and the material quality in this Camry is worlds better than what was in that RX. If you've been in any new Toyota product lately, one of the things you may notice about new Toyota products is a lot of the, the plastics are getting thinner. A lot of the materials are kind of getting downgraded. This Camry, on the other hand, 
thick, supple, real leather, not soft text or Nulux, thick plastic padding on the dash panel. We have really, really beautiful, kind of almost a shimmering silver plastic down here on the center console. We have really, really nice leather on the steering wheel. Everything in this car, every place you put your hand and that you will touch on a day-to-day -day basis in this car feels a cut above what was in that RX and probably two or three cuts above what was in my 2023 NX, which is really, really impressive and something I love and I'm absolutely going to miss when this generation of Camry goes away, much like the way I missed the interior of the last Lexus RX, which was actually very similar in material quality to this Camry. All right, guys, moving on now to my fifth like about the Camry. And believe it or not, it's actually the heated and cooled seats in this car. And I know it seems kind of strange to dedicate an entire chapter of this video to heated and cooled seats. But believe me and trust me when I say that these are the most effective heated and cooled seats I have ever felt in any car at any price point. I mean, when you turn on the heat, they get hot. When you turn on the cooling, they get cold. And it's to the point where you can really feel it even when you're wearing a thicker outer layer. You can still feel a nice radiant heat surrounding your body. And the same thing on a cool day. If you're wearing a nice polo shirt or a t-shirt, you feel them immediately. And it feels like you're standing in front of a refrigerator. They are truly that good. And not only are they incredibly effective in terms of the amount of heat and the amount of cooling that they can deliver, but when you hit the switch here on the center console, you are getting to max heating and max cooling in like a minute and a half. It is honestly crazy how effective these seats are. And it's one of those things where when you're in a car with weak heated and cooled seats that don't really deliver and don't really deliver quickly, you really notice because you're like, I press that button and I'm not feeling anything happening. In this car, it's the opposite way around. You hit that button and there is an immediate delivery of either heat or cooling to your body. And so I really, really love that in this car. And I honestly wish that Toyota, whatever they did here, they should replicate in their other cars. Because I can tell you honestly that these are way more effective than even what's in my Lexus GX, which also has heated and cooled seats. So if that matters to you, definitely give this Camry a shot. All right, and last but not least, for my sixth and final like about the Camry XSC V6, I've been trying to figure out over the entire time that we've owned this car how to articulate what it is that makes this car so special and what gives it that soul and spirit that I feel like it has. Because there are a lot of things I love about this car. I love the engine, I love the interior materials and the cabin, and I love the exterior design, but it's not any of those things in isolation that makes this car so special. It's all of it together. And the way that this entire package package comes together in this Camry. And the best way that I can think to explain what I'm trying to say here is that this Camry is in many ways the perfect paradox. And what I mean by that is it is like a split personality in the best possible way. So at once, this car is both affordable, but also very affluent. It is subtle, but it is also very striking with the black roof and the black wheels and sort of the racy sports sedan styling. With the V6, you can have an endlessly refined drive, but you can also have a totally raucous drive. And because this is a Toyota Camry at the end of the day, it's a very responsible choice, but yet you can have some illegally irresponsible fun in this car as well as you saw it on the road today. So all of that together, I think, makes this car so special. And really getting that balance perfectly right the way that this car does is really, really hard to find in most cars out there because a lot of cars are going to efficiency and leaning real hard toward efficiency or leaning real hard towards affordability or leaning real hard to being a luxury car. That balance just doesn't really exist in the auto market today. And actually, when that 2025 comes out, I think that balance will go away from the Camry as well. Because, you know, the A25A four-cylinder hybrid engine that's going to be in that Camry, it is a great engine. That's actually what's in our RAV4 Prime was in our uh, NX350 hybrid as well. But anytime Toyota puts that A25A engine in a car, it turns into an appliance. And I don't mean that in necessarily a bad way, but it's going to take away the soul and spirit of this car that I love so much. So if you want that perfect paradox that we get here in this V6 Camry XSE for 2024, this is absolutely a car that you want to buy while you still can. So there you have it, six likes about the Toyota Camry XSC V6. And this is a car that I think if you, if all of those things are appealing to you, 
this is a car that you should not miss out on while you have the chance to buy it. Because I think like the last V6 Highlander, like the last V6 RX, this Camry V6 is going to retain its value pretty well over the years. Because there is always going to be a very dedicated group of people who want a V6 sporty sedan that has all those attributes that we talked about in one car. And that's going to make these cars, these V6 Camrys, incredibly desirable in years to come. But with all that said, my videos, I always feel very strongly I need to give you equal parts good and bad. So let's now move on to my dislikes. After six months of ownership, what do I dislike about this Camry XSE V6? And that begins with the outdated displays that we have around in and around this car. And this is, I think, probably the weakest point for this car and the thing that will turn a lot of people off. Now, here in the center of the dashboard, we have a much older Toyota head unit than is in pretty much every other Toyota car out there. This is running Entune 3.0 which was Toyota's last generation infotainment system. And the thing that's kind of always been unfortunate about this infotainment system is even when it was brand new and it came out in cars in the mid 2010s, it never really looked great. Now, there are ways that you can make it look a little better and some cars had higher resolution screens, but this Camry, Toyota, it kind of seems like Toyota just gave up. It does have a 9-inch display, which is quite nice to have because a lot of Toyotas from this generation maxed out at an 8-inch screen. So you do have a relatively large display. But the thing about this display is it is so low resolution that things like the 360 camera are almost unusable. And in the case of that 360 camera, like it is really only good for judging what is around you. You can't really look at that and figure out exactly what that thing on the ground is. It's just kind of of lackluster. Now, I personally could drive cars without a 360 camera for the rest of my life and be okay, but if having that 360 camera and being able to rely on it to, you know, see what's on the ground around your car is important to you, you really have to look at this, take it for a test drive, and see if that's going to work for you. The same thing is true of the other displays in this car, like the head-up display, that we have here in front of us. I love that we have a head-up display in this car and that was something of a rarity and it was kind of special that this Camry had it when it came out back in the mid-2010s, but this is really an older head-up display now at, at that came out at a time when it was just enough to project information onto the windshield. But if you got into a newer Lexus car or a newer Toyota car, the graphics are so much sharper, so much more in focus on those head-up displays than this one. Again, you really have to see this in person and see if you can live with it. All right, guys, moving on now to my second dislike about the Camry XSC V6, and that is these seats. Now, what's really weird to me about these seats is that they look identical to what's in the in every other Camry, and they look identical to what's in the XLE trim of the Camry, but even though the sculptural design of them is the same and the seat shell looks like it's the same, these are incredibly firm seats, and that was one of the first things I noticed when we, even when we took this car out for a test drive, I sat down in it and remember thinking that I felt like I was kind of sitting in a racing seat, which is not necessarily what I want out of a sedan that's supposed to be a good balance of comfort and luxury as well as performance. And because these seats are so firm, I kind of feel like Toyota should have left these for the TRD trim of the Camry and given us a softer and more compliant seat with a little bit more give in the XSE trim, something more of like what we have in the XLE trim. Now, with all that said, don't take that to mean that they're uncomfortable because we have, again, taken this car now on a number of road trips where we were doing three to five hours in one hit in the car, and they are absolutely more than comfortable for what I want on in a road trip car. But if you really value having a really soft and plush seat, you really need to go sit in one of these at the dealer and see what you think because I feel like even for me, who I don't mind a firmer seat, these are quite firm. So again, sit in them for yourself at a dealer, see if you're okay with that. And if you're not, then of course you can always get the XLE V6, which again does have a softer, more compliant, more plush seat. All right, moving on now to my third dislike, which is the lack of all-wheel drive in the Camry V6. Now, if you know anything about Toyota sedans, historically, the Camry and ES have never had all-wheel drive with the V6. So it's not like this was taken away from us. It's just something that Toyota never, ever did for these midsize V6 sedans. But I wish we had it because I think in combination with this engine with the sportier suspension, with the fact that this car can very much have some fun out there on the road. I wish we had all wheel drive because I think in certain conditions, 
having an all-wheel drive system would allow you to push this car a little bit harder than you feel comfortable, or at least than I feel comfortable with pushing it when we have just front wheel drive because I have been in a few situations where I have pushed this car quite hard and then the back end gets a little bit slippery and a little bit confused about what it's supposed to be doing. But if I had power getting sent to those back wheels, I could also use those back wheels to grab traction on the road and kind of also push me around in that kind of driving. And I understand to a certain degree why we don't have it because that, you know, it's sporting driving and canyon carving is not the mission of a Camry. But because Toyota went so far over the years to make this into a a pretty serious driver's sedan, I feel like they should have added all-wheel drive, even if just for this very last generation of Camry. I think this would have been incredible. Now, that probably would have sabotaged sales of the IS350 of the uh, and of the Toyota Crown, but even still... I wish that we had been able to celebrate this V6 engine and all that it can do with all-wheel drive, but sadly, we can't. All right, moving on now to my fourth dislike, and I'm kind of sad to say that it is the JBL sound system in this car. Now, JBL in Toyota has never been known for having outstanding audio quality in any way, but if you've ridden or driven any of the new Toyota cars like the Highlander, like the Crown and the Grand Highlander with those JBL systems, they've been doing some really amazing things for a mainstream upgraded audio system. Now, none of the JBL systems are ever going to come close to the Mark Levinson systems, like what you'd get in the Lexus ES and what's in my Lexus GX. However, this Camry's JBL system is lackluster at best. Like, one of the things I expect from an upgraded sound system, even if it's in a mainstream car, is that I'm getting crisper audio, I'm getting clearer voices, and I'm getting more delineation and differentiation between the low tones and the high tones. And in this car, even when you're playing high-fidelity audio files. So for example, when I was driving this car, I ripped a CD to my computer, put it on a flash drive and put it in the car. And I still was hearing what kind of sounded like Bluetooth audio. No matter what I did with the equalizer or any of the sound settings here in the head unit, I could never get the clarity and the crispness that I was looking for from that audio file and from the speakers in this car. And for reference, I did test the same audio in my GX, which has Mark Levinson. And obviously in there, it sounded absolutely outstanding. So it wasn't the audio file. It's the speakers in this car. And one of the other things that's worth noting about this, even this upgraded JPL system, is we're missing a center channel here on the dashboard. So it really is worth, when you are going to the dealer to take your test drive, take with you a high quality audio file, put it in that car and see what you think. I just can never get the system to sound great, even though it is the upgraded JBL system. All right, guys, well, here you join me in the garage for my fifth dislike about this Camry, and that is these tires. Now, these are the OEM stock tires and OEM wheels that come on the Camry XSE V6, and they are the Bridgestone Taranza all-season tires in the 235-40 R19 size. Now, as you can see, that is obviously a very low-profile tire. So for those of you who are averse to low-profile tires and big wheels, that is something that you'll want to account for if you're thinking about picking one of these up. Personally, I like the look and I don't actually mind the ride with these tires either, so I think we're going to stick with these as it is here. My problem with these tires, however, is that we've owned this car now for about 6 months and 3,500 miles, and these tires have not seemed to have broken in at all since the day that we bought them. Now, if you're not familiar with tire break-in, when you buy a new tire, usually that tire is really rigid because the rubber is fresh from the tire factory. And over time, over a couple months and a couple thousand miles of driving, the tire softens up as it gets used to life on the wheels of your car. And as the rubber compound softens up and breaks itself in, you get more grip. You often also get less noise because the tire isn't so rigid anymore. That doesn't seem to have happened with these tires, and I'm not entirely sure why, because I've actually heard really good things about the Taranza series from Bridgestone as a whole. But again, even six months and 3,500 miles on, these tires are still making a lot of noise, and I don't feel like we're getting enough grip from them for the performance that the 2GR engine is capable of. And especially, again, because this car lacks all-wheel drive, we're really looking at the tires to provide enough grip on these rear wheels to keep the car in a straight line and to keep the, the, the overall uh, response of the car predictable enough on the road. So I think for us, what we're going to end up doing 
is at some point in the near future replacing these tires with something like a Michelin uh, Pilot Sport 4 or something else like that that's going to give us a better performance um, all season with also hopefully a slightly quieter and slightly more compliant ride as well. So do be aware, if you're in the market for a Camry XS EV6, you'll probably want to build in the money into your new car budget for a better set of tires and then again also a better set, a smaller set of wheels if you are averse to low profile tires in general. Toyota actually has a really nice 18 inch wheel that they use on the SE that I think would look great on this car and then with those 18 inch wheels you could obviously put a tire with a thicker sidewall on them as well and it would work just fine here on the XSE. All right, guys, and finally, on to my sixth and final dislike about this 2024 Camry XSC V6, and I'm just going to be cheeky about it and say that my final dislike is the fact that this car is going away, because... You guys have no idea how much I love this car, despite the low-res displays and the lackluster audio and the outdated technology. It's all those things, though, honestly, that I love about this car, and I will live with those things happily to get to drive this car, to have that engine, to have this interior, to have the old-school Toyota plastics and the high-quality materials inside. Everything that we talked about in the first half of this video, I so miss that all of that is going away with the new 2025 Camry. And... Here's the other thing too. I can't help but think how amazing the new Crown Signia would be if Toyota had just held on to this V6 for a little bit longer and put it in that car as well. Because the Crown Signia is meant to be, Toyota's been calling it a premier vehicle. I don't know exactly how they're defining that, but it seems to suggest that it's sort of an upmarket in between luxury and mainstream vehicle and because they're positioning it that way I don't think that it should have the same engine and powertrain out of a RAV4 hybrid I think it should have something much better than what's in any old Camry or Highlander or whatever like it really should have this V6 and if they put this 2GR V6 in that Crown Signia, that thing would be absolutely amazing. And I would maybe even think about trading this Camry in for that. But because they're not doing that and it's going to get a naturally aspirated inline four hybrid engine that I've driven in the new RX and I hated in that new RX 350H, that car for me is a non-starter. And again, if you value cars the way I value cars and you love everything that this Camry XSC V6 or this Camry V6 in general brings to the table, you really, really, really should think about buying one of these now while you still can. And here's the other thing. If you are in the market for one of these Camry V6s, it's no secret that the general public has turned away from sedans. Everyone wants a crossover. Everyone wants a more compact car. Everyone wants a hybrid. And because of that, and the fact that it's the end of production and the end of this model line, there are a lot of discounts to be had on these cars on dealer lots. And most people who I've heard from who have bought one of these in the last six months or so, like us, were able to get between four and $6,000 off of MSRP. We got about $4,500 off MSRP, which brought this car to $39,000. And for that, again, total steal. And you're not going to find anything like we talked about with those other V6 sedans that still exist. You, you're you looking at at least $10,000 more, if not twenty or $30,000 more for another V6 sedan. And like a Tacoma these days, a mid-trim Tacoma is now in the mid-50s. So this is not only a great car and the last vestige of old world Toyota, but it is truly a bargain in the automotive marketplace today and one that I don't think you'll regret buying if you were to pick one up now. So anyway, that is six likes and six dislikes about the 2024 Camry XSC V6. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Questions and comments, leave them downstairs, or as always, you can write to me at the email that you see here on screen. I love getting emails from you guys and just kind of hearing about all your adventures with cars and so many of the emails I get turn into videos that we do here on this channel. So I hope you guys have a great one. I will see you real soon and take care.